Welcome into the Locked On Sports NBA Trade Deadline Special. And here with us is Locked On Sports Atlanta co-host and also, of course, with Locked On Hawks postcast as well, Jarvis Davis. Jarvis, this has been a crazy day for everybody else, but I think you would agree with me that it has been a crazy day, week, month, year for the Atlanta Hawks because it's will they, won't they, will they, won't they, will they, won't they. This might be the trade deadline news that we all were expecting, but until we saw the tweet the first tweet, maybe about 10 or 11 minutes before the trade deadline, we truly didn't know what was going to happen because even up to last night, there were reports that conversations were being had between the Atlanta Hawks leadership with the New Orleans Pelicans leadership. And there was an attempt to even trade DeJounte Murray, Clint Capella and Anyeka Okongwu, although we never quite got information on what the Pels were going to be giving up in exchange for getting those three players. I know for me, Jarvis, that was the one, and we'll talk about a few of those other trade rumors as well, but that was probably the one that was frustrating to me the most because I felt like unless the Hawks were going to really get something that was going to put them in position to make a run, I don't think you just give away everything and just, unless you're you're wanting to put this in rebuild mode. So I don't know about you, but I'm pretty glad and I'm pretty confident it was the right move for the Hawks not to just make a move to make a move, not to rush into a trade, but to do the thing that made the most sense long ter short term and long term. Absolutely, because at the end of the day, when, when you give up a three first round picks and for DeJounte Murray and you're what, a year and a half, almost two years in, and then you got your new coach who came in with the last 20 some odd games of, of last season, and you just didn't really start getting the feel for it. You got you to gotta let that thing play out because we talked sure. about this being up to the trade deadline because, you know, you always see the Hawks kind of go on a nice little run and try to figure things out and you start, they start to get healthy and let's just face it. That's the real reason why the Hawks are where they are right now in this position, yep. fighting for a play-in tournament spot, you know, halfway, more than mm -hmm. halfway the season. So it's because of the injuries, you know, Jalen Johnson and DeAndre Hunter. And we right. all know the NBA is built on wings. You need as many wings as possible. And being from Atlanta, and I love some hot, spicy lemon pepper wings. So, yeah, they need them. They need as many as they possibly can get. So when you hear about all of these rumors and everything like that, you started. You saw the heat up with the Lakers and all that, but I I know when you, this last minute one with the Pelicans, I thought was kind of a little intriguing because they talked about specific players that they wanted in Herb Jones and, and you know and stuff like that. But they were talking about they wanted uh, Yekon Conquer too. I was like, no, have you yeah. seen him play these past yeah. couple of nights with Clint Capella being out in the starting lineup? So it's just too many factors going into this trade deadline to say, you know what, we we're gonna trade Dejounte Murray. And we're going to see, we'll try to get some assets back and try to get better. And yeah. I just, that was just too rich for a lot of teams' blood. Indeed, indeed. And for me, I think the other piece there was it had the feel of a rebuild. And my thinking was, I don't know. And they sold us on, T. <laughs> not at all. I, I was like, I, this is this is so confusing because right, right. you literally go out and you get Quinn Snyder to come in 22 games before the regular season. I'm sure you didn't sell him on a rebuild either. I'm sure you sold him on. You just need a few pieces and you need the right coach to be able to. The goal, I think, this year was to just fight your way out of the, the play in route. Now, you're probably not going to get to that, unfortunately, because you took a hit that nobody saw. First of all. Jalen Johnson, most improved player probably across the league, arguably is going to win that award. And yeah. most important player for the Hawks, didn't see that coming. But then when he became that, you also didn't see him being out for five weeks and how much that would impact this team. Because to your point, he was a part of that group that really was giving some good two-way play, especially bringing help on the perimeter. But I probably disagree a little bit with most people with the Herb Jones piece because points wise, he was going to bring something to the table. But for me, if all you're giving me is four rebounds, I don't really need that because I don't need your points. Sadiq Bay gives in that department. Yeah, I think, right. I think the Hawks are good. The Hawks are scoring at the top of the, 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 the tree across the NBA. So oh. scoring wise, you've got that. And you got a player in Sadiq Bay these last couple of games. Man, he went down just for one game, and I was thinking, whoa, you brought him back too soon. But then he's the guy who, against the Celtics, up until the fourth quarter of last night's game, kept the Hawks in it. So I just felt like as far as what the Hawks were going to get out of this deal, Herb Jones wasn't enough for the one thing that you are sorely missing. Jarvis, before this week, everyone was talking about you know all of the issues and challenges of the backcourt of the Hawks, but I have contended for quite some time now, your front court is the issue because you don't have a consistent perimeter defender because DeAndre Hunter, A, 
is injured a lot. And B, when he's there, you never know which Dre you're going to get. And Mm -hmm. I also thought that there were challenges because you don't have enough out of Clint Capella in terms of what you're seeing in the evolution of the big man. You're getting it out of Onyeka, but there's still a lot that you have to develop in him to figure out if he's truly going to be that guy that you're able to plug in at center. And I don't think you have enough down the depth chart to be able to get anything else. But I think, yeah, of all of the no trades on trade deadline day, this was probably the one that really piqued everybody's interest. Not because it wasn't expected, but because it was like, whew, all right, now we can move on and see what these Hawks are going to do backside. Thank you so much for stopping by, Jarvis. Of course, check us out, like, and subscribe, Locked On Sports Atlanta. We appreciate you for that. And of course, Locked On Sports Atlanta is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.